Hi, everyone. My name is Crystal Melcher. I'm the Client Services and Events Manager with ASI. I want to welcome you and thank you for joining our Digital Solutions for PDL1 Interpretation webinar. Before we start, I want to go over some general items. There will be a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. If you look at the bottom right corner of your control panel, there is a questions box. So feel free to type in your questions there and we will try to answer as many as possible during the Q&A session. If we do not get to all of your questions, we will answer them via email within the next couple of days. I would now like to introduce our guest speaker today, Dr. Joseph. Dr. Joseph is the Chief of Pathology at Lowell General Hospital, as well as an Adjunct Associate Professor at Boston University School of Medicine. I will now pass the floor on to you, Dr. Joseph, so you can begin today's presentation. Thank you, Crystal. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you again for participating in this webinar. I have no conflict of interest. I just wanted to give a brief overview of uh, what we will do today. In the first few slides, I will have some background information about PD-1 and PDL one And then we will um, go into the meat of the presentation where I will um, discuss the actual practical challenges we had as we implemented PDL one staining in our lab. Uh, we are a small community hospital about 20 miles north of Boston. Um, and we will um, also share with you how we used the ASI instrument to overcome some of the challenges that we had. So recent advances in oncology have um, actually revealed many newer methodologies in treatment of cancers. In that, PD-1 and PDL one are two of the newer uh, mechanisms that we use in treating um, solid tumors. PD-1 stands for program death receptor. This is usually expressed on the host T cells. PDL1 stands for program death ligand one, and this is usually expressed on tumor cells. So the interplay of PD-1 and PDL1 is one of the mechanisms by which solid tumors evade immune surveillance. So these um, are um, molecules that are used to define or hide the tumor cells, use these molecules to hide from the host immune surveillance. And checkpoint inhibitors are a group of pharmacologic agents that help unmask this evasive tool, thus allowing the T cells to identify the tumor cells and destroy them. Here you have a list of some of the FDA approved pharmacologic agents that are used in this particular targeted therapy. And I'm sure many of you have heard most of these commercial names in TV ads and in journal articles and in the recently concluded ASCO meeting last weekend. What type of tumors are they used for? They are mostly used in patients with melanoma, lung cancer, bladder tumor, as well as many other um, tumors. This is a current study recently published in New England Journal, where you can see that over 27 different tumor types use this particular type of um, checkpoint inhibitor treatment modality. Since the first approval of this particular medication, you can see that patients with various types of tumors have been uh, utilizing this particular um, drug category. If it is so widely used, 
why do we have to test for pdl one why do we not just give the drug and that of course is because it has several side effects some generic side effects like nausea cough and rash are frequent however there are serious organ system complications like um, pneumonitis renal failure and other complications can occur so we have to choose patients who will receive these drugs carefully in addition there are other regulatory barriers in using these medications because um, this is considered a drug that requires a companion diagnostic test specifically for pdl1 this does include insurance approval if the patients are in the united states and if they have insurance um, costs of use using this medication could be upward of 50 to 60 thousand dollars and for our uh, particular talk purposes we just want to focus on the daco agilent clone 22 c3 which was the approved companion diagnostic test that our oncologists were requesting us to evaluate so again to summarize a companion diagnostic test by definition is a form of personalized medicine where the drug is approved for patients who are most likely to benefit from it and the benefits would out outweigh the risks. And the CAP guidelines currently state that for lung cancer, the practice um, guideline from CAP is that this treatment is under development. If, if we are expecting a a specific practice guideline from CAP anytime now, but currently this is um, under investigation and under development. And as we were evaluating this PDL1 marker study, immunohistochemical marker study, uh, we required us to have at least 100 viable tumor cells. The PDL1 using this particular DACO clone was is not validated for cell block, so this has to be on a biopsy. We have to look for membrane staining. Cytoplasmic granular staining is not considered positive, and we are required to calculate a tumor proportion score based on the formula on the slide. So this does require 100 tumor cells. So in a perfect world, um, if the percentage of tumor cells that are staining with the PDL1 immunomarker is less than one, it is considered negative or no PDL1 expression. One to 49% is partial um, or medium expression, and high expression is when there are 50% of tumor cells that are staining with this marker. So the cutoff values are currently relevant as this number will then determine which patient might receive this as a first line treatment or not. And right away you can appreciate 49 versus 51 is going to make a difference whether a patient is going to get a medication or not. And that was um, concerning for us. This is the reality, which is slightly further than a perfect world. Um, in our lab, we, whenever we try to bring a, a new stain uh, in in house, we always evaluate cost benefit ratio and we definitely determined that the um, case volume we do see a decent number of lung cancers here so our case volume was definitely supportive of bringing the test in-house but however our instrument is ventana and we do not have a darko instrument so we were concerned how to implement this stain in-house 
So we um, usually when we do not have um, validated stain in-house, we send our cases to Neogenomics for the technical component and we um, have the slide shipped back to us for professional interpretation. So we reached out to Dr. Weiss at Neogenomics um, and the discussions with him was very helpful. He did forewarn us that um, there is definitely a need for us to be adequately trained before we could do our own professional interpretation. He referred us to an online training module he also um, alerted us that there is significant variability in staining as well as background staining that is going to be challenging. Um, we took on the challenge. So all of the pathologists here, um, there are five of us. We completed the online training within a couple of weeks and hence uh, were approved by Dr. Weiss for professional interpretation per guidelines. And we sure did encounter many challenges once we started um, trying to interpret this in-house. Um, and some of these, among others, were inter and intra-observer variability in scoring, uh, challenges with uh, background staining, challenges with non-uniform staining, low cell count. Um, most of the biopsies definitely had more than 100 cells, but 100 cells was all that was necessary and that put us in a quandary and the cytoplasmic granular staining and the tumor infiltrating t cells were also misleading for us in the back of our mind as i stated before we did have concerns of tissue sampling since 100 cells would decide if a patient would or would not get a medication However, we are um, encouraged by a recent uh, published ahead of print article from AJSP that showed that there is a 92.2% concordance between um, the core biopsy and the resection specimen. And so that, was, um, that is reassuring at this point. As we, the, time, the timing of this project for us was right because we had recently purchased the ASI instrument through our Cancer Center Team Walk funds. And all of us were, um, all of the pathologists here were in the process of familiarizing with the digital image capture process. And we were using it for um, ERPR HER2 and KI67 evaluation for um, breast core biopsies. So we immediately recognized the similarities of the membrane staining algorithm for HER2 and the PDL1 training module. So we sought um, IRB approval with um, Lowell General Hospital Institution Review Board. And um, some of the points that we made to request the approval are on, on this slide, specifically, uh, the request from our oncology group was what drove us to try to bring this in-house as soon as possible. So we studied um, 50 cases to compare manual versus um, digital image analysis um, for PDL1 staining. And we specifically used a particular tool in this program called the lasso tool to eliminate a lot of the background staining. And I, I want to emphasize to all of you listening that this is definitely a key step in the image analysis algorithm. This whole system won't work if you don't use that lasso tool. It is absolutely required to um, utilize this in uh, image analysis. So uh, we um, evaluated PDL1 staining in 50 cases, 50 different cases, which were all non-small cell carcinomas of the lung. The first 15 cases we used to train the system, and we had one of the engineers from ASI fly in from Israel. He spent a week with me. All of the study was completely performed by me. 
I uh, did a manual count of a hundred cells on this smear on the biopsy slide, PDL1 stain slide. I had the H and E side by side so that I could uh, go back to the H and E slide to be sure that I am evaluating the tumor cells. And then once we optimized the parameters after the first 15 slides, I did not make any changes to the, the programming set up by um, the engineer for the next 35 slides. And those 35 slides are the study group. And when I evaluated manually, I evaluated 100 cells as required by the, uh, the companion diagnostic guidelines. But when I evaluated using the image analysis system, I counted, uh, I included every single slide, uh, every single tumor cell on the slide. This is an example of the um, table that I had created as I was doing this study. Um, for the manual evaluation, I did not try to differentiate one plus, two plus, or three plus. But in the image analysis algorithm, which was very similar to HER2, that information was included. And also, as you can see on the right-hand side, the total number of tumor cells are much higher than the 100 cells that I analyzed by manual evaluation. So that is um, the this slide summarizes the study results. And we were able to determine that for the medium expression cases, which was the ones that were most concerning to us, one to 49% positivity, um, there was excellent concordance and we were able to eliminate intra-observer variability and were reassured that counting all of the cells on the slide helped eliminate inter-observer variability. The caveat, of course, is that the lasso tool is critical in this step. And in the next few slides, I will highlight a few examples of the cases that I used in the study. On the right-hand side, you see that there is a um, macrophage that is showing this background granular staining. And this particular um, tool, the algorithm that was created did not count that cell. So that actually, and it uh, counted only the cells that were adjacent to it. So that really helped um, optimize this system. This is an example where I counted 100 cells and deemed the tumor negative. However, once we analyzed the entire slide and found focal areas that had um, focal positive staining, we did come up with an 8% positivity. So from a negative score, it moved to a um, medium expression tumor. And this, of course, is um, operator dependent and is obviously looking at the entire tumor is critical in evaluation. Again, uh, this highlights the use of the lasso tool so that we can um, definitely eliminate some of the background staining and um, eliminate the cytoplasmic granular staining. So just limiting yourself to 100 cells may um, lead to false negative results. It is important that the entire slides are evaluated. In summary, we still um, do report the manual count because this algorithm is um, a study that we conducted to aid us in coming up with a number. The ASI instrument, along with the lasso tool and the algorithm that they have created, definitely saves us time. It also gives us peace of mind in a busy small group practice where we can provide 
accurate results for our patients with lung cancer. This is something that we are routinely using now. Um, in all non-small cell lung cancer patients, we see about five to 10 cases a month. And occasionally we have um, requests from our oncologists to do PDL1 stain on an advanced urothelial carcinoma patient. And, and we do it only at the request of an oncologist who is um, utilizing this for treatment planning. So in summary, um, this system is definitely helpful in giving accurate and precise numbers. Um, we feel much more confident when we are reporting a result. We use this as an aid in helping us um, determine if a patient has PDL1 expression and giving an accurate number has been definitely helpful using this instrument. I do want to um, acknowledge the collaborators who helped. Shanan is the engineer and Neil too. Both of them are engineers from ASI. Um, Mr. Thomas Ackerley is our PA who helped me um, set up the computer uh, work. Uh, he's um, I'm, I'm not very savvy with computers, so he really helped me with that. And of course, I want to acknowledge the IRB team here at Lowell General Hospital who um, aided us in expediting this study so we could bring it live as quickly as possible. I want to thank Crystal and Tamar for giving me this opportunity. And at this point, I'll pause and um, shall take any questions you have. Thank you very much. So I have um, one question uh, that is, uh, what benefits do you see in performing digital analysis compared to manual analysis? Um, again, uh, in a small group practice, time is most precious and definitely using this helps us give a, a better number and you are not tending to miss a a focus or miss a few cells which have a particular staining category, one plus, two plus, or three plus. Uh, if you're tired at the end of the day, you have a more robust system that helps you identify a particular uh, positivity or negativity. I have another question. How to select background staining to exclude when there seems to be so much background? Again, um, I cannot emphasize enough um, how critical it is to use the lasso tool. Uh, it is once you picked all of the fields that you want to evaluate, you can just um, use the lasso tool to draw a line around where the tumor cells are. And um, that will definitely help in um, determining where the tumor cell, where the tumor is. It is, for us in practical terms, it is certainly helped in um, determining the positive and negative tumor, uh, the expression of PDL1. Uh, I have another question. How often do patients in the one to 49% still receive immunotherapy? The guidelines state that if, um, the, if the tumor is still advancing after conventional therapy, this one to 49% range may be, patients may become eligible to receive therapy. And also patients who have advanced non-small cell lung cancer who have um, uh, failed the primary therapy, conventional therapy, or who have metastatic non-small cell lung cancer, those patients might receive this um, as a first line treatment if they have um, advanced tumors. Our, uh, the next question is, are there any tissues where you include immune cells in counting or are they always excluded? 
as a um, guideline for companion diagnostics test, we always exclude the immune cells. They definitely interfere in the counting, though we, uh, we have to be very mindful of that. So we, we cannot count those. We have to count the tumor cells that express um, PDL1. Um, next question, uh, what challenges do you see in the adoption of these digital methods in clinical practice? Is the pathology community receptive to this idea? Pathology community is definitely receptive to the idea. I, uh, I really do not, uh, most pathologists are very inquisitive, curious, eager, are early adapters, at least the pathologists I know are. Um, all five of us learned how to do this. Immunostain is immunostain. It is really not that complicated. So um, it was not um, difficult learning it. It was just a question of making sure that we are following the guidelines, particularly more and more as tumor cells are um, uh, variable in expression and this these markers would determine whether a patient gets treatment or not. We really have to be sensitive to that. These um, medications are um, used as like a lifelong treatment. You do not ever stop these unless there are serious side effects. So it is a significant financial burden for the patient. So we have to be very careful in choosing it. I really don't see many challenges if there are um, digital tools that are available. I think pathologists are uh, eager to take this um, challenge on to their practice. Uh, my next question um, is, you mentioned that manual scoring is erroneous due to evaluating only 100 cells. Um, yeah, if you compare the algorithm results with manual counts, how reliable is this comparison? It is a very valid question and I do not have a, um, scientific analysis for that. I do know that people should not, this study primarily was to see if um, a digital uh, solution is available, counting a hundred cells as any, any pathologist would attest to um, is difficult. You have to have a cell counter next to you and you really have to be also tracking um, how many cells had one plus, two plus, three plus. Uh, I am a hematopathologist. I'm used to counting. I do differential count on bone marrows all the time. It is pretty labor in intensive. So I really wanted to quickly find a solution so that our group did not have to sit and count the 100 cells. So this algorithm really helped us um, uh, save a lot of time. So. Uh, I still want to say that um, it is reliable. Scientific numbers I don't have to give you, but definitely I'm very reassured by this methodology and I'm, uh, we use this regularly in our practice. Um, have you used this system on melanomas? Right now we have not used PDL1 staining on melanomas. Um, I know that um, this is, it, it is a standard of care for patients who um, have metastatic melanoma, but our oncologists have not been asking for it. They, I think if eligible, they are trying to give it to patients um, in melanoma. The indication is if they are BRAF positive, they use this. So we do every melanoma that we have in our uh, practice. Uh, whether primary or metastatic, upfront gets BRAF studies. And based on that BRAF mutational status, our oncologists would determine whether um, uh, they want to use this uh, PDL1 inhibitor. So it is not based on actual staining of melanoma, it's based on the BRAF that they're using it. Uh, question, next question, have you also used SP142 and SP263 in this study? Mm, absolutely not. Um, we were just going by the guidelines of compa companion diagnostics. Um, so they required us to use DACO 22C3 clone. And so um, that's the only marker that, um, that's the only clone that we used. Uh, I know that um, 
um, one of the pathologists or investigators at Yale had done a comparison of various clones and um, this particular 22C3 was the one that uh, was recommended by them or the one that um, uh, had the most sensitive data. So that's what we have used. We, and that was again driven by um, um, insurance and other market forces. We, we have not used the SP142, those two clones. Thank you very much for um, listening in and thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm sure Crystal um, will help answer any further questions. Um, and thank you all for your time again. Dr. Joseph signing off from Lowell General Hospital. Bye.